What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to yet another Addict to Fishing tutorial. Today we're going over the basics and the easy method of making yourself your own bait and that is spawn sacks for steelhead and trout. If you guys want to learn more about how to do this awesome little method, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So spawning sacks are a really great way to fish for trout and steelhead because it's the perfect way of using the bait, using your eggs, and having them not be able to be taken away by smaller fish and even a big fish biting your line. A spawn sack can be fished for, for hours on end if it's your last one or, or if need be you're trying to preserve bait. But they're a very easy way to preserve that valuable bait that you have and that you've cured up by yourself. And it's a great way to just catch fish anyways because you have a lot of scent and you have a great profile down there in the strike column. So what we're gonna start with here is just these beautiful coats Boho eggs we got yesterday. We're gonna take them, we're gonna open them up and butterfly them. A lot of people use a knife or they can use their fingers or hands. I like to just grab on both sides of that skein, slowly fold outward, getting that thing to open up and just pulling that skein apart so that I can get into those awesome little berries. So the key to making these spawn sacks, you can make, you can season up just your normal actual skeins of eggs, just like you would normally season them up. And if you guys don't know how to do that, go and watch our last tutorial that we just released. It's actually how to cure eggs for steelhead and trout. So go back, check that out. That way works good. You can chop it up into little bite-sized pieces with your scissors. But what I like to do a lot of the time and what makes it a lot nicer and neater spawn sack, it makes them a little bit smaller. You can get them in all sorts of different sizes, which you're about to just be demonstrated here in a second, is by getting them into singular berries. So so I like to open that skein up like I did there with my fingers. I just take a normal spoon and I just slowly start gently pulling and you want to let them come off by themselves. You don't want to just slowly work back and forth along the skein and not pull off a lot of those eggs from the membrane too quickly or else you're going to break them. So you can see that membrane that's actually down here on top of that flyaway fish mat. We don't want to take that with. So I'm going to keep just doing that nice, easy motion, just kind of breaking each one of those little clusters of eggs off of there. Just like so, and you can see how I'm starting to get this nice little pile here. So I'm not gonna do this whole thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and go through and do part of it for you guys, so that we can get right to actually how to seasoning these things. So I'm gonna take a couple more right here, just keep pulling them on off. And see how that skin, that membrane staying behind. Because what this does, it turns into a big white fluff which is a good presentation if you're actually wanting to use that, but that way you don't actually need the spawn sack. We're trying to avoid that and use just the berries and leave this so that just those berries are present inside these little mesh sacks here. So I'm gonna keep pulling these off just like that and that should be plenty. Now what I'm gonna do is I ha actually have some of these left over from the last little tutorial we just did. I'm just gonna make a big old pile of them here, kind of spread them out in a pan or a Tupperware or any kind of thing like that. Ziploc doesn't work quite as good. You wanna be able to openly get to these things very easily. So I'm just gonna scoop all these things into my pan and then I'm gonna put a little bit of cure on them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cure some of the eggs. A lot of times you'd wanna let the actual berries cure themselves first and then put them in the spawn sacks, but to make it easy and to show you guys how to do it, you can just put them straight in there after you cure them. But a lot of times, you wanna cure these, let them sit for two or three days in the fridge, bring them out, and then add them to the spawn sack. So I got these nice and spread out, I got all those beautiful little berries. So the cure I'm gonna use here today is a pretty hot cure. Because I want these berries to last and put off scent for a long time, I'm gonna add a little bit more of that fuse cure and a little bit more of the sugar and the salts to that so that I have a little bit more scent coming out of that mesh constantly. So. The fuse cure is the one I'm gonna use. There's a natural cure, and then there's also this steely pink cure by Procure Baits. You can find it on their website. You can find it at most of your stores that you go salmon and steelhead or trout shopping. And uh, it works very, very good for making this method super easy. And then I'm gonna add some borax to the outside, which I'll demonstrate to you in just a little bit. So I'm gonna take my fuse cure here, open that stuff up, and I'm gonna be very, very, very light on this. I don't need to go crazy. I just need to salt and pepper these things just enough so that we get some of those preservatives onto those eggs and allow them to start soaking up a little bit of that extra bite stimulant and that scent so that those fish can see these things coming or smell them coming. Just a tiny, tiny bit of just white granulated sugar and then just a tiny, tiny bit of salt, again, to help kind of preserve these berries inside that mesh, just like that. Mix these up. Get each one of them nice and covered. And just a little secret sauce on here, one thing I'm not gonna forget, it's our Addicted Steelhead Blend. There's a Winter Chrome Blend as well, but that actually has some egg in it, so it's not as necessary for this scent. So, I'm gonna add that Steelhead Blend, just a nice little drizzle. Boom! Man, that looks good. So, 
the next step, you guys, the fun, the fun part, the tedious part. You're wondering why I have a shot glass here, and it's not exactly so to be out here boozing it up, but it's actually to make this method a lot easier. So this mesh here is just some pre-cut little pieces of mesh. You can get them from Procure, you can get them from anybody. Uh, just look for them at your tackle store on the shelf. And a lot of times people will try to make their spawn sacks just like this, flat on the ground, or flat on your surface, just like that. But this is why I have this shot glass. So I'm gonna take this shot glass, I'm gonna lay that mesh right over the top of it, just like so. And then I'm gonna to start to add my berries right into that mesh. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna perfectly close that thing for me without having to try to fold it all up into my fingers and create that little twist. So I'm gonna take my spoon, I'm gonna go with about, oh, probably half a tablespoon's worth. Really, it depends on just how big you want that spawn sack. If you have very clear water, you have tough conditions for fishing steelhead or so on and so forth, you're gonna want a little bit smaller spawn sack. If you have big, high, dirty water, or you're fishing for you know big fish and you want a bigger bait, you want to go with a little bit bigger spawn sack. But I like about anywhere from a nickel to about a quarter size thing of eggs there, just like that. It's just a perfect little sack. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold both ends, all four ends of that right at the top. That's what that shot glass helps so nicely with. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna start twisting. And while I twist, it's gonna start to tighten down on those berries there, just like so. Just about until you start to see some of that goo start to seep out there, just like that. Because that will come loose a little tiny bit as you go to start putting a stretchy string on here. And this stuff is just this really good little stretchy string you can find at any fishing store or online. So I'm gonna take this stuff, I'm holding it with my left hand, I'm still holding on to that twist that I made, and I'm just gonna start wrapping, just like so. You can see how that juice is kind of starting to seep out of there a little bit. The juice is starting to seep out of there. I'm getting that thing nice and tight, but again, not popping any berries. I'm gonna do about, oh, 15, 20 wraps. I'm gonna take my fingers here, make a, I'm just gonna keep, create a little bit of a, a rectangle there, a triangle. I'm gonna twist to one side, just like so. Wrap around, twist one, just make a few half hitches, just like so. I'm gonna grab my other side of the line here and pull it tight. And there we have it, you guys. A perfect little spawn sack. Now, I'm gonna take my Gerber scissors here, put it right at the top, and there we go. Just a beautiful, sexy little bait. Perfect and ready for a steelhead or a trout. Now these work really, really, really great for trout fishing as well, because you can get that stuff online, you're never gonna lose your bait. You can make these as small or as big as you want, so let's go ahead and make just a couple more for you here. I'm gonna grab my mesh again, and I'm gonna make one that's about as small as I can go. And my mesh across. I'm gonna take, oh, probably, what is that? About 12 berries or so, if that. Add that in there just like so. Let it fold in on the glass. Again, just grabbing the top of all those pieces of mesh. Start to twist. Take my string. Bam. And we're ready to go. Bait number two. So you can see really the difference in the size profiles that you can get when making these. And there's different colors of mesh. There's different colors of, of cure. There's all kinds of different styles of these things that you can make. So usually if I'm gonna spend the time to do this, I'll sit there, I'll make about 15 or so of one size. I'll make about 15 or so of the other. Because the one thing you can't do is remake those while you're out on the river. You can cut them apart if you have the mesh and the stretchy string with you, but it's gonna be a pain in the butt while you're out there trying to fish. So I'm gonna make one more here. Then I'm gonna show you the last little part of the trick. All right, now that I got all my little guys twisted up here, the last but not least step to this is preserving them and getting them ready for the water. These things are ready to fish just like they are. You can put them in and just do a jar, but a lot of times if you just throw them into the jar, just like this all touching each other, it'll get really juicy. A lot of that liquid will pull up in the bottom of the jar and you're gonna have a big tacky kind of sticky mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my borax here, shake that stuff up, make sure it's broken apart. I'm gonna take my, my mason jar that I have here and I'm gonna dump Oh, about an inch or so of that stuff into the bottom, just like so. I'm gonna add a small little handful, about five or six of those bad boys, roll them around, and I'm gonna add just a little more borax, and I wanna kinda create some separation in between all these spawn sacks so that they're not touching, 
And then this borax will actually help preserve and keep those guys nice and full of juice without making a big mess inside there. So I'm gonna shake those around, make sure those are getting nice and covered there. And you can even add a little bit more of that cure inside that as well, uh, or you can add some different scents, maybe some, some uh, krill powder, or some of the different things like that. Make sure those things get busted up in there. Don't want those big chunks of borax floating around. I'm gonna add the rest of them here. And there you have it, everybody. A fishy, fishy, fishy little batch of absolute fish candy. So again, this works really good for steelhead. It works very, very good for trout. It's a great way to preserve your valuable bait and a great way to get it down in the strike zone with a great little profile and a tasty treat for those fish to be biting. If you guys want to learn more about tutorials just like this one, go down here and check out our page, Addicted Fishing. We aim to educate, entertain, and inspire anglers like you to go out and have more fun on the water and catch more fish. If you guys want to see another tutorial just like this one, go up here and click this link to this other video. Be sure to go down here and subscribe, hit that little bell notification, and comment below with what you thought of this video or what kind of tutorial you want to see next, and you could be the comment of the day, just like this comment right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. You stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.